crime, murder. The motive, money. $300,000, which never reached the bank's night depository. The place, New York City. The killer and the money vanished. A slick, cold-blooded job. Not until a year later in the city of Los Angeles did the case suddenly come alive again. Detective Sergeant Calvin Bruner, working out a robbery detail, Los Angeles Police Department, had checked off duty for the night, was on the way home when his trained eyes and ears stopped him. This is a police officer. Come out in the open. With your hands up. I said come out in the open. All right, don't shoot. Don't shoot. Drop that gun. Now come over here. Keep your hands up.
Robbery Division, Farnham speaking. What'd you say his name was again, ma'am? Yes, ma'am, we have your husband on a robbery charge. No, he's not receiving business this. tonight. Call in tomorrow. What are you doing here? I on my way home and going by this drugstore. I saw this character and a pal of his taking over the joint. Sit down here. Pal, you feel all right? Yeah, sure. I never felt better. Take everything out of your pockets, put it on the desk here. Thought you had a date. Hmm? Oh, that's right, I did, didn't I? Well, I guess I'm going to be late. This one of the guys from the drugstore, Lieutenant. The other's on his way to the morgue. All right. The fruits of honest toil, no doubt. Anything wrong, Lieutenant? Charlie Bowman got it. I don't feel so good. Shut up. Where did it happen? Boyle Heights, a couple of hours ago, tried to break up a gang fight. Does his wife know about it? Yep. I had the pleasure of telling her. It was too bad. Well, give me a doctor, will you? Shut up! Glad I got the other creep anyway. Look, uh, why don't you go ahead and wash up? I'll book him. Sure you don't mind? No, go on. Okay. See you in the locker room. All right. Start telling the lieutenant your life story. Look, honest, I got the shakes. Give me a doctor, will you? Never mind that. What's your name? Anthony Sorovich. Where do you live? I'm a transient. Who's your partner? What difference does that make now? You know, some people can remember faces that can't remember names. Sometimes I remember both. It's a gift. The last time you paid us a visit, it was Jake Lamont. Lost some weight since then. Business bad? My name is Anthony Sarovich. Where'd you get the roll? Took it off the guy that runs the drugstore. Fifty dollars. You know, he's an old money pusher. That could be counterfeit or it might be hot. I'll check it with Stimson. He's all yours. Let's go. You ought to know the way by now. Come on. Look at that. You remember when I got this suit? When was it? Did it? Yesterday. That miserable creep. Good thing it didn't go through you. Yeah. I could have been laid out tonight next to Bowman. Mm. Only yesterday, Bowman was telling me that he made his last payment on his car. That's something, isn't it? Ah, stop taking it so hard. He wasn't your brother. Nope. Just a nice guy. The name I know gets me this stuff wholesale. Oh, look. It's not too bad, huh? Stinks. Tell you one thing. I'd rather be Bowman any day than alive and pushing a desk like Lubin. Lubin doesn't catch any slugs where he's sitting. Yeah, it's all in the day's work. Yeah, sure. Just can't afford to make a mistake. That's right. Bowman probably got a little careless, that's all. Sometimes I wonder what would happen to him. Francie and the kid, if I got a little careless. Ah, uh, knock it off, Jack. I can't afford to lose you. Think you can find time to go to Bowman's funeral? Oh, yeah, sure. Maybe I'll wear my new gray suit. Oh, yes, he'll love that. Sometimes I wonder why we go steady. Because I'm irresistible. <laughs> what am I going to tell baby this time? Tell her you're sorry, but you had to shoot a man. If she loves you, she'll understand. Bruner, find him. See Captain Michaels before you leave. That ties it. And what the old man wants now? Probably wants you to take over his job. Yes, sir, there was a $50 bill in what they took, all right. You sure about that? Yes, sir. <laughs> Tom, I think it's his bedtime. I'll just keep the toys here. Now, Mr. Mays, I hate to bother you, but you see, we have to know where you got this 50. Can you remember? Yes, sir, I remember. Um, a customer, a man I'd seen several times before, came in tonight. Tonight? Uh, yes, sir. I was just getting ready to close up. Well, anyway, he seemed to be in some pain, 
So I filled a couple of doctor's prescriptions for him. Said he had a, a gallbladder condition. Uh -huh. He's the one that gave you this bill. Oh, yes, sir. I remember because I had a hard time making change for that much. Anything else you remember about him? Of course, with every prescription, there's a, there's a name, isn't there? You recall what it was? No, sir, no. I don't recall offhand. But I can check the prescription like slips. He was grousing about having to go back to work the way he felt. He said he worked at a club, a uh, bartender, uh, the Emerald Club. Emerald Club? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Do you know where that is? No, sir. Now, Mr. Mays, we uh, have to ask you a funny kind of favor. See, we have to put this bill into evidence. So we'd like to keep it here for a while. Of course, you'll uh, get another one just as good. All right? Yes, yeah, sure, I guess it's all right. Fifty dollars is pretty cheap for what you did for me. Oh, we don't charge for this kind of service. So we'll just uh, consider this a loan, shall we? Oh, now the rest of this you can have back. I think there's a hundred and twenty-three dollars here. Can you get home all right? You got a car? Thanks. I sure owe you a lot. If there's anything else I can do, I... You know, there is something that you can do. I wish you'd go back to your drugstore tonight and get the name on those prescription slips and phone it in. Will you do that? Sure. Could I uh, have somebody go with me? Well, I think we can arrange I'll that. I'll take care uh, of it, Captain. Okay, fine. I will get the name. Well, good night. Good night. Boys? Uh, yes, sir? Move and check this bill, and as you probably suspect, it's hot. Oh? Uh -huh. Belongs to that elevator homicide job in New York. I just talked to him back there, and some of the money, not uh, too much of it, is showing up in Miami, and there's some in uh, Las Vegas. They want us to follow up here. So, Bruner, mm -hmm. you and Farnham take this on, see what turns up. Yes, sir. You hold the stakes. Captain? Now go find me a bartender with gallbladder trouble. <laughs> <laughs> Good night, Captain. Uh, Bruner. Yes, sir. You took a long chance tonight, and you won. Next time, play it safe, huh? Right. Good night now, boys. Keep in touch. We will. But I never did like sending two policemen into a bar. Jack? Asleep. Honey, what are you doing? Checking up on me? Nothing wrong with the baby, is it? No, she's fine. It's me. I guess I'll never be a very good wife for a policeman. Hey, what's all this about? I heard about Charlie Bowman. Grace called me. Oh, it's so awful. It could have been you. I tried to get you, but you were out. I, I just want to be sure you're all right. Of course, I'm all right, darling. Well, the odds are a thousand to one in my favor. Those are honest figures. I read them last year. I know I'm being silly. You have so much to worry about. Baby, me, the house. But sometimes I wish you were in some other kind of work. Come on now. Doing what I know how to do. What I've been trained for. And I like it. Except on payday. You know, for the first time, my feet hurt. I think I'm getting old. Jack. Hmm. Sometimes when I'm lying here waiting for you, I get panicky. I wonder what I'd do if you didn't come home. I've never heard you talk like this before. I couldn't stand it if anything happened to you. I know I've got the baby. I do love her. I've had you so much longer. 
darling, please, C couldn't you get a transfer to something else? Something safer? Don't press our luck. Darling, everything's gonna work out. I'll think of something. Not till five. Can't you read? It's all right. We're not drinking. Yet. Your name Marvin? How's your gallbladder? We had a talk with a fellow at the drugstore. You gave the man a $50 bill. Is this it? Well, how would I know? I just gave him 50 bucks. There are quite a few of those in circulation. Not like this one. Where'd you get it? What are you guys getting at? What is this? Ah, uh, mine's your bladder, Marvin. Just think back. Where'd you get the 50? You borrowed it. From whom? Someone I know. It's a girl. She works here. At what? Well, she sings songs. She has a hat check concession on the side. Mm -hmm. She always good for a 50. I needed that 50 bucks for the doctor. Tips have been lousy. Sure. Hi, Sam. Who are you friends? Leftovers from last night? They came in to see me, but they want to see you. Oh, well, I don't blame them. What are you boys doing, mugging up a chain letter? If you don't mind, Miss, we'd like to talk to you a few minutes. No, no, I'm not supposed to sit with the customers. It's all right, we're not customers. We're police officers. Oh. Right over there behind us. We just want to ask you a few questions, miss. Like what? Like for a start, what's your name? Lily Marlowe. Hope you'll excuse me, but that sounds a little phony. It is. What's your real name? Oh, you know, it's been so long I can't remember. Isn't that silly? Either of you detectives seen a gold cigarette holder around anyway? Never mind. What's your address? 305 Sycamore Avenue, Hollywood. Thanks. This is the 50 you gave the bartender. It is? Listen, we got work to do around here. Now, you fellas can come back later. Now, Lily, you know You're better. you the owner? Yeah. Carry on, Sergeant. I'll be my guest. This won't hurt a bit. Where'd you get the 50? You know, I've seen all this on Dragnet. Save the jokes for the customers. Come on, think. It was a tip. 10.95 the set. Fifty dollar bill is a pretty big tip. What did you do for it? I just put this down in your little book. Ready? Mm-hmm. Not what you're thinking. Okay. How did you get it? I have a lovely voice. I sang Smoke Gets in Your Eyes five times. It was loaded. Who? The guy who gave me the 50. Who was it? I don't know. I really don't oh, know. Oh, no, come on. Don't put a blackout on me. Who was he? What was his name? Never saw him before or since. I miss a man like that. All right, what did he look like? I didn't notice. You can do better than that. You know, I don't like this kind of work. He was probably a nice guy. But that wouldn't make any difference to you, would it? If he was a nice guy, he's got nothing to worry about. Now, come on, give. Well, he, uh, was bigger than you. Around 40, dark hair. Mm-hmm. Anything else? Any distinguishing marks? And like, uh, scars or moles on his face or body? How should I know? 
How about his voice? Any accent? No. Anything else you remember about him? No. Nothing? Uh -uh. Ah, thank you very much. You've been a great help. If he comes back to uh, hear you sing, please contact us, will you? I want to give you something to remember me by. That's all, Mr. Hosmer. Thanks. Now, that's Sergeant Farnham. We'd appreciate your help. Yes, Sergeant. Anything? No. Miss Marlowe doesn't seem to care for police officers. Can't understand why. Oh, just certain cops. Uh, anything else I can do for you gentlemen? You'd like me to sing something? We'd love it, but uh, we can't afford it. He makes a bad impression at first, but he loves you. Believe me. For a haystack, then we look for a needle. Don't you think you've given the taxpayers their money's worth for one night? Aren't you going to invite me in? No. You know, at least the pup's friendly. All right, Murgatroyd. Ah! Beat it. Don't be long now. <laughs> Look, if you've got time to kill, why don't you blow your whistle and arrest somebody? I think you forgot something. I don't know what you had in mind, but I'm going to take a shower. I'm afraid that'll have to wait a little while. Make yourself comfortable. Now, why don't you really try to remember what he looked like? Who? The man who gave you the 50 bucks. How long have you known him? All my life. Ever since I was a little girl, I dreamed I'd meet a drunken slob in a bar who'd give me 50 bucks and we'd live happily ever after. Stuffy in here. Uh, do I pass? Detective, dear, I'm going to tell you a little bedtime story. Once upon a time, there was a girl, she could have been my twin, who got into trouble in a big city far away. She was framed for something she didn't do. So today, she doesn't go in for framing other people. Do you feel the point? At the end of your story? Yeah. Nobody's going to be framed. Now, why don't you try real hard to remember? See if you can't come up with something good for me to go on. Hmm? You know, withholding information from the police gets, uh, gets you in all sorts of trouble. I like to keep my job at the club. I get hungry three times a day. You keep eating. Now, come on, think back. Well, all right, he had a mustache. Thin one. When he gave me the 50 bucks, I told him I thought it was a pretty good tip. He said he could afford it because he had a good day at the track. Will you buy that? Yeah, sure, for now. See, so you had this set for 12. Let's make it about 8.30, huh? Appreciate it. We came down to police headquarters about uh, 9.15. Looked over our picture gallery. And, uh, wear something simple. Uh, I'll pick you up myself. You've been grand. I just don't know how to thank you. I bet you do. 
Come in. Chris, come in. Well, any luck, Miss Marlowe? Mm -mm. She checked all the mug shots in R&I. And? Mm, nothing. Well, that figures, doesn't it? I mean, if he only works in New York, he wouldn't be in our files. Uh, sit down, uh, Miss Marlowe, please. Thanks. You know, I uh, telegraphed the description <clears throat> that you gave us to New York, and we hope it may help them back there to uh, come up with some new evidence. <clears throat> I also sent out a special bulletin to stores, the racetrack, and banks, and suggested they put on a special watch. So you've given us a lead, Miss Marlowe. It's, uh, it's kind of slim, but still something. Brunner tells me you, uh, you'd be willing to help. Oh, well, Brunner tells me I haven't got any choice. Well, that isn't exactly true. However, I think I should explain to you, we're looking for more than money in this case. We're looking for a killer. Now, the man who gave you that $50 bill may be the one. And there's no one, at least that we know of, can identify him for sure, except you. And if we should spot him, he could be dangerous. Of course, you'll have plenty of protection at all times. Uh, thanks, Captain. But you know, I think I'll just sit this one out. You see, I'm no good during the daytime. My eyes hurt. I work nights, you know. So I think I'll just toddle back to bed. Excuse me. Yes? Lubin, Captain. Things are getting hot. Just got a report from Hollywood Park on that New York job. Two twenties and a fifty came in. What's our next move? I'll call you back. Well, Miss Barlow, you, uh, you heard that. Mm-hmm. And? I wish I'd never seen that fifty. Well, I'm glad you did because, you know, let's face it, unless you help us, we don't have much to go on. What about it now? Will you go out to the park with the boys here and take a chance that you might uh, just see this fellow? Uh, close that, uh, that blind. The sun's right in her eyes. No, never mind. Leave him like that. Guess I'd better get used to it. Oh, and you can save that speech about being a good citizen, Captain. Crazy about horses. Excuse me, do you have a match? Sure. Thanks. Sergeant, five days has been enough. I resign. Now take it easy, baby. We've got track security men all over the place. The guy wouldn't have a chance. Look. Why don't you look around over at the $10 window, huh? And stop worrying. Jack and I are watching it, too. Hi.
forces are nearing the starting gate. for a minute. Now, he might come back to uh, hear you sing. Mm-hmm. All right, I'm coming. I'm the star of the lead up boost, breaking on top, hit the loot second row, squirrel start, breaks up, he is full. Diamonds? Yes, honey, but we're not looking for diamonds. I am. Talk is that for a married man? Can't stand much more of this steak, huh? What do you mean? Didn't know there's this much money in the world. These people throw it around like it was confetti. Yeah, I know what you mean. You know, someday I'm gonna come out here on my own time with a wad of dough and, and a gal like. Like Lily, maybe? Yeah, maybe. Perhaps he'd like to have you come out to the house on Monday night for dinner. Bring somebody. How about it? Monday? Yeah. Sure, I'd like it. Why don't you ask Lily? Maybe I might just do that. I want you to know. I could never feel as others do. And even though I may kiss you, I could always let you go. For I've told my heart that I'll never fall in love. Didn't, oh, didn't you know? Oh, in the fourth race. Go ahead, knock off again. Do you good. I'd love to, but if I do, I'll never get up. Say, I'd look great turning up to the track in this outfit, wouldn't I? Feels great. Just what I need. Thanks. These last three days, I've learned a lot about you. <laughs> what? 
half as tough as you like people to think you are. Can you guess my age and weight, too? You need somebody to take over, look after you once in a while. Only, you couldn't give in to that, could you? You know, somewhere in my dim past, I seem to have heard this before. I've said it before. To all sizes and all shapes. Only, with you, I mean it. Don't ask me why. All right, I won't. What time is it? Uh, 3.15. Oh, no. You ever been married? Yeah, I tried it once. When I was 18. Well? I was a great guy. Broke. Never sober. One day he went on the wagon, took a look at me, and thought I was his first wife. <laughs> no, I've grown up since then. Crazy about money now. Isn't that awful? Because mm. I haven't struck gold, but I haven't given up hope either. There's a man figure in this? Yeah, man figures. If he likes the things I like, and can afford them. No, I pulled up lame. Gonna have to let this one go. Yeah. This time I mean it. Showed up after the last race. Somebody bought one ticket, got forty dollars in change. It was a big rush at the last minute, so I didn't get a chance to check until after the race. Let's uh, circulate, hmm? Come on, baby. All right. Honey, yeah. take these and look up there in the stands. See what you see. We're in there. All right. You know, I'm going to be a little bit sorry when this case is over. You're getting to be a habit with me. Day and night. See anything? No. Going to miss me? <laughs> right now, I'm too tired to know. You kind of liked that diamond bracelet on that old gal yesterday, didn't you? Loved it. Guess I'm going to have to start saving my money. You do that, hmm? Come on, let's mix a little, huh?
What are you doing? Relax. What are you doing? Let's take it easy. Now let's get the loose ones back on top. Are you crazy? I'm gonna phone in. Give me that. No. Go on back. It's police officers. Go on. Now keep that road clear. We uh, dragged the body out here. Mm -hmm. Sure was a big guy. Mm -hmm. Is this the box? Yes, sir. This is where it landed? Yeah, just about there, Captain. Get a chance to count it? No, no, we were picking the step up all over the canyon here. Yeah. What time did it happen? About, uh, I guess about 6, 15, 30, mm -hmm. You've gone over everything in here. I, what about these bags? Did you check these? You, yes, sir. Well, here you are, Captain. Nothing else, huh? No, that's all. Can we move the body? Go ahead. All right. Seven hundred. Yeah. This identification probably forged or stolen. Edgar H. Brown, it says here. Why don't you boys knock off? You put in a good day's work. Fine. Thanks. You want any money at the track? No, we were a little busy. <laughs> okay, see you later. Right. Good night. Good night. Good night. Oh, uh, boys, don't forget to thank Miss Marlowe for me. Oh, no, I'll take care of it personally. What'd you do with it? Just keep driving, I'll show you. That's good, because somehow we're gonna put it back. Oh, we are. <laughs> what do you suggest, going to Michaels and telling him we overlooked it? We accidentally picked up $80,000? I don't want any part of it. You wanted it as much as I did. It was written all over your face. All right, maybe I did in a way. Who wouldn't? Sure, I thought of what I could do with all that dough. But wanting it and taking it are two different things. You said we took it. Just wasn't there. Who's to know how much was there in the first place? <laughs> Nobody can prove anything. It's marked money, Cal. What are you gonna do with it? Use it for wallpaper? I don't know about you, but I know what I'm gonna do with my half. Keep it a while and sell it. Slow down. It's right up there on the right. Well? That's us over there, the little one, number 36. Best place I could think of in a hurry. We like to go fishing weekends. The man rents it to us by the month, and for a little extra, he keeps it here for us. It'll do for a while. That's great. What makes you think I'll go along with you? Jack, we're partners. We've got a lot to lose. Especially you. You've got Francie and the kid to think about. Thanks for reminding me. We've both got keys. 
Number 36. You've done a pretty good job all the way around, haven't you? I think so. Now, when we get together Monday, we'll really have something to celebrate. Jack. I know I sound like an old nag, but please don't drink so much. It's supposed to be a party, isn't it? Of course. We're supposed to be celebrating with great cops we are, isn't that right? Oh, Jack. So we'll eat, drink, and be merry. She is, Francie. But it's cooler in here. Besides, Lily and Cal would like to see her, wouldn't you? Oh, go on, bring her in. Go ahead. I don't want Bridget in here. All right. Look, Francie, why don't we go in and see her, huh? ginger ale, one club soda. That correct, Sergeant? That's right. Well, what are you waiting for? It's a charge. Oh, I know that. I saw your picture in the paper when you tracked that man down. Chasing all. It was great. Thanks, son. Like this, you're really gonna lose things up. You know that, don't you? Can't even look at my own kid anymore. I can't look in the mirror without gagging. Come on, Jack. Snap out of it. Look, feed this whole thing to me, will you? Believe me, it's gonna be all right. tried sleepy time down south on her and she wouldn't go for it. She's a little dull, Jack. Uh, spike this for me, Sergeant. Why, sure. Dinner won't be long. Uh, Jack, why don't you give me a hand with the salad? He's great on salads. Hurt too. Oh, too bad you're working tonight. Why? We can go down to the beach and cool off. Sunset 25690. Yeah. Never saw you boys so jumpy. What are you doing, running a bookie joint on the side? No. Nothing that legitimate. Oh, it was great, Francie. I'm stuffed. I can't eat another bite. Oh. 
Oh, it's wonderful. You're beautiful and you can cook. Oh, that's too much. Francie, let me give you a hand with the dishes, huh? No. Oh, thank you, Lily. Jack, you don't know what you're missing. It was good. You know, you got a nice place here, Jack. Well, you will have as soon as all this green stuff goes up. Just like some cheap murder mystery. What do you mean? I planted something else besides flowers there. What are you talking about? I buried a key there. That's the number 36 on it. Some people plant flowers in their backyards. I plant keys. Would you like us to leave? Yeah. I'm going to hold you to that promise. Okay. <laughs> oh, she's smart. Wouldn't let me do a dish. Well, Lily's going to make a new woman of me. Going to get me a new hairdo, and uh, it might even call for a new dress. Don't you listen to Lily. She'll get you into bad habits. <laughs> Baby, uh, you about ready? It's getting a little late. Yeah, Francie, I forgot I'm a working girl. Got to go. Oh, that's right. And so long, honey. Oh, Thanks for the dinner. In. It was a wonderful dinner. I'm glad you liked it. Will you give me the recipe with that sauce sometime? Uh-huh. Flatterer. <laughs> Francie, thanks for having me. I'm so glad you came. Hi, Jack. Mm -hmm. Night. Night, Cal. See you tomorrow, Jack. Night. Bye. Bye. I don't think they had a good time. I was just kidding about the dress and the hairdo. We'll save that money. Never mind. You spend it on yourself. It's ours, isn't it? We came by it honestly, didn't we? Of course we did. All right. I'm sorry, Francie. I... Yes, sir. No, he just left here. I don't know where he's going to be. All right, I'll tell him. Maybe I can reach him at home later. Yes, Captain, we'll see you first thing in the morning. Good night. Is anything wrong? No, no, nothing's wrong. You've always told me when something bothered you. Listen, Francie, why don't you get some rest? Maybe I can help. Nice people. Hmm? Francie and Jack. Oh. Hmm. Too bad, though. What do you mean? Well, people like that not getting along. Maybe they're having a little trouble in the dough department. Could be. Guy with house payments to meet and wife and kid to look after, it gets a little rough. Figures. Mm -hmm. Jack seemed to have something else on his mind, though. Maybe he did. Maybe you got something on your mind. What is it? Nothing. I was just thinking. You now I've got a hand at France, the way she runs that house and everything. I couldn't do it. Must be something wrong with me. Hmm. Yeah, nothing wrong with you. You wouldn't want to be a cop's wife, would you? No. Rice is for eating, not throwing. <laughs> That's the way I feel. We're a lot alike, Lily. We won't settle for just anything. We want the best. And you know what? We're going to get it. Yeah, that's why I'm putting the show on the road. What do you mean? Thought I'd try Las Vegas for a while. It's quite a spot. You ever been there? No. Nope. I thought with all that loot floating around, there ought to be a way of getting some of it for little me. Don't you think? Yeah, yeah, sure. Uh, who's going to stake you? Oh, that's a silly question, isn't it? I don't like that. So you don't like it? Lily, 
If it's money that's troubling you, maybe I can afford you. How does that sound? Like a pretty cold proposition. Thanks, I'll make it under my own steam. Yeah, I bet you will. You should be a smash with that voice of yours. That's what you had in mind, isn't it? Singing. Shut up. What I do is none of your business. It has been. You dirty little cop. What's to keep me here? Me? That's a laugh. I was getting along fine until I met you. Sure, I was broke. I still am. But I didn't have to answer to anybody, and that's the way I like it. Oh, that's the way you like it, is it? That's why you're running out, huh? Uh -uh. You're stuck for me. That's why you're running out. Same as I am for you. Isn't that right? Leave me alone, will you? Answer me. Leave me alone. Isn't that right? I don't know. Bruner and Farnham are outside, sir. Are you sure about the fingerprints on those suitcases? I'm positive. That's funny, because here in Bruner's and Farnham's report... Uh, thanks, sir, uh, Stimson. Tell them to come on in. Right, sir. Captain will see you now. Hello, boys. Captain. Captain. Sit down. I was, uh, I was just looking over your report here. Checked all contents of car. You told me that you uh, checked those suitcases, didn't you? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. And you report here that you did. That's right. Now, I can't figure out how you could do it. Do what, sir? Well, how you could check those bags without leaving any fingerprints. Because your prints were everywhere else around the place, except on those two suitcases. It was just the dead man's. Well, you know, Jack probably figured that, that he had, you know, all the excitement and everything. So it was a mistake, huh? Pretty careless one, don't you think? Those bags might have uh, been important clues in this case. That's, uh, that's no way to slough off possible evidence. I'm sorry, Kevin. Won't happen again, sir. By the way, there was, uh, there was almost $200,000 in that box. Yeah, we read that in the newspaper. That leaves around uh, 100000 that's still missing. We know some of it was passed, and probably some of it was sold in the hot money market, but not that much. Because the bonding company will undoubtedly send out a, a special investigator. He'll want to talk to both of you, and... Ask you a few questions. Oh, sure. Any time. Uh, is, it, uh, is that all, sir? That's all. Thanks, boys. Simpson, uh, will you have uh, somebody bring up those two suitcases? Yes, sir. Want a cup of coffee, Jack? It's hot. No. Didn't your mom ever teach you to say no thank you? How does it feel to have your hands on that kind of money? I didn't feel anything. I hear there's a lot that hasn't turned up. Now, if you'd uh, like to make a small investment, Jack, I know a guy who's drilling an oil well near Segundo. There's a grand or two still open. What's with you? You're looking to start something. What's the matter with you guys? Can't you take a joke? I don't like the joke. You all right? Yeah. Your boyfriend's a little overtrained. Sergeants Bruner and Farnham, report to Captain Michael's office. Bruner and Farnham, Captain Michael's office. You, uh, you wanted to see us, Captain? Yes, boys. I want you to take a look at the clothes in these suitcases. This coat here, Farnham. Slip yours off. 
Try it on. Are you serious? I want to show you something. All right, sir. Because you're a pretty big fella. A little snug, isn't it? It certainly is. What's all this, sir? Well, the driver of that car was bigger than you, wasn't he? Yeah. It's a cinch he couldn't have worn this coat. So he must have had a partner. Maybe that's where the rest of the money is. I wonder where they were going to meet. No labels here, of course. It's a pretty well-tailored coat. Oh, we'll check all these clothes. Maybe the stitching will give us something. Yes? Oh, that's all right. Go ahead. Uh-huh. Farnham? Well, send him home. I'll have Lubin find a replacement. Police surgeon down Georgia Street. When you told me you were a fighter, we could use you at the police benefits. It wasn't anything, Captain. Well, we were just uh, horsing around in the locker room. <laughs> Not quite the way I heard it. Well, let's forget it. That's all, boys. I get down for four. Uh, four, four, ten, sixty, eighteen, and in spades. Sergeant, dear, that's another game. And you know something? You owe me 20 bucks. Nobody could be this bad, you're not trying. Sure I am, honey. And you're not very bright. Can't keep my mind on the game tonight. <laughs> Come on, give me the 20. We're yeah. only three customers in the Emerald Club tonight. Very bad for the purse. There you are. Plenty more where that came from. Good deal. Yellow. I saw your picture in the paper. Smart cops, you boys. But not too smart. Who is this? I don't want the details. That money belongs to me. You're gonna give it up, or I'll have to tell the teacher all about it. Who is this? Don't waste my time, Bruna. I know how much was in that box. I'll let you know where and when. Good night. They want hmm? me down at Central. Michaels? Mm hmm. Here you go. Oh. Sorry to break it up, Edna. Well, too bad. First time I ever lost a man to a man. Well, it was fun while it lasted. You and I are going to last a lot longer than you think. Come on, drive you home. This is Cal. Is Jack there? Oh, Cal. Where is he? What's wrong? Ron? He's in trouble. I know he is. I heard him take the car out about an hour ago. About two o'clock. I tried to stop him, but... Been out riding?
Francie was worried about you, Jack. Frankly, I was too. What have you been doing? Checking up on our investment? What do you want? Is still there? I don't know. Somebody was tailing me. Sure, somebody was tailing you. You know who? The guy whose coat you didn't fit. I, uh, I got a phone call tonight. You know, we've got a partner on this deal now. He'd like to meet us with the money. When? He said he'd let me know. You, uh... You weren't trying to cross me up tonight, were you, Jack? Cal, I... Jack, is that you? I'll meet you at Russo's in an hour. Okay. We've got a deal. Hi, Murgatroyd. Come on, Murgatroyd. Who is it? Me. Oh. Lily. Hmm. Uh, I got to talk to you. Oh, honey, I'm beat. Not now, later. Not hmm. later now. Cal. Baby, hmm. how would you like to go to Acapulco or someplace like that? Well, this was worth waking up for. Oh, I haven't got the clothes for it. Ooh, buy clothes down there. Yeah, and that $200 you loaned me will help. That wasn't a loan. Huh? Since when can cops go around passing out money like that? Cal. Yeah? When did your rich uncle die? Tonight. That's too bad. I'm sorry. You must have done him a big favor once, huh? Yeah, I did. I've heard of smart cops doing favors once in a while. But you know something? I don't blame them. After all, look at the risk they take for us taxpayers. Nellie, I want you. I've never wanted anything like I want you. Maybe we... Maybe we could even get married down there. I've always wanted to go to Mexico. Crazy about hot food. Hello? Yes, he's here. Who is it? It's Jack. He sounds funny. What do you want? Keep your shirt on. I'll be there. I was supposed to be on duty. I just took off for a little while. Can you leave tomorrow? Sure. Okay, I'll, uh, I'll call you later. Cal. Yeah? Tell me something. What? Did Jack's rich uncle die tonight, too? No. Change my mind. What are you talking about? Look, maybe I don't need that diamond bracelet. I, I'm kind of used to having you around. I don't want anything to spoil that. Nothing's going to spoil it, baby. Yeah, but maybe we really don't need these things. That's what you say today. But tomorrow you see something in the window. Something with a price tag on it. A big price tag. And you'll want it. And even if you don't, I will. And we're going to have those things. All right, have it your way. Take care, huh?
Uh, give me a cup of coffee, honey, will you? Black. What took you so long? What's it hurry? I've got some news for you. Yeah? Okay. We're not gonna give the money to that hood. Well, now you're talking sense. We're gonna turn it over to Michaels in the morning. Oh, we're gonna turn it over to Michaels, huh? And what are you gonna do for another job, if and when you get out? I don't know, but I'm not going on like this. I... Oh, my bad. I thought you wanted to do so much for Francie and the kid. Not this way. Jack, will you believe me? I know what I'm doing about this money. We take it down to Mexico and sell it. So will you take a beating on it. But there'll be plenty left for both of us. But you're getting a little bit ahead of yourself. What do you mean? What about our partner? What about our partner? When he calls, we'll keep the appointment with him. He'll shoot in self-defense. Might even get a big promotion for it. Now we murder. You're sick, Cal. Should have known that a long time ago. You don't care about anything or anybody. You're sick. Coming from you, Jack, that hurts. We're no better than that hophead money pusher you dragged in. Maybe even worse. He's got an expensive habit to support. That's his excuse, but what's ours? A couple of sticky-fingered cops. Thieves. So? So we're gonna come clean. We're gonna turn that money in before it's too late. We both got good records. Maybe they won't be too hard on us, I don't know. But we're gonna come clean. Is that the way you want it? That's the way it's gonna be. Okay. Hmm? What are we waiting for? Come on, call it. Heads. You lose. Under the cushion in the sack. So you were gonna run out on me. Drop that sack. Cover me, Cal. I'm not running out on you! Shoot! Georgia Street's on the way. Can I help? You can pick up all this money that Farnham found. 
That's the voice. That's the other guy. No, Farnham. No. He's one of our men. There never was anybody else. A policeman, unlike most men, lives close to evil and violence. He can, like all men, make his own private hell. The good pass through it with minor burns. The evil stumble and fall and die in strange places. Thank you.